Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Crime Wave, which is also known as the XYZ Murderers. And this was considered to be a different project from the writer and director Sam Raimi, along with the Corn Brothers, who happens to be the writers of this film. It stars Louise Lasser from Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Paul L. Smith, Brian James from Blade Runner, Cherie J. Wilson from Rock of Texas Ranger, Edward R. Pressman, who's the executive producer, Bruce Campbell from the Evil Dead films, and so on, and Reed Burney. As the film opens, somewhere set in the 30s, a nerdy electric repairman, Victor Ajax, played by Reed Burney, is scheduled to be on death row to be executed by an electric chair for a bunch of murderers he did not commit. It is 5 minutes to 12, and the Lorish Ajax flash back to the events that leads him to this precarious situation. Due to his former boss's murderer's intentions, he got to deal with a duo of maniac and wacky exterminators known as Farron Crush and Arthur the Ratman Kodish, both played by Paul Smith and Brian James, and also met the woman of his dreams known as Nancy, played by Cherise J. Wilson. Especially since these two actually killed a burger alarm company owner and all the rest, which leads to the, the bigger problems between between the two and more murderers start to come around which only leads to Vic um, Ajax to stop them from from harming him and his love interest. Also leads to bigger trouble is Ronaldo the Heel who's played by Bruce Campbell and also Louis Lasser who's also spying on them which eventually those two started attacking her inside the apartment. And that's where everything lies ahead. Seeing that this has been a Sam Raimi project, not to mention the Corn Brothers, I know most people never heard of this movie. Although I've actually had heard of this film a long time ago, like back in the 80s. At this rate, it was on Cinemax. I remember watching this film for a while. And, and it's been a long time since I've seen it. But as far as I'm concerned, I remember how funny it actually looked and how crazy this movie turned out. I mean, you gotta admit, some of the funniest scenes in this movie had to be the scene with Crush, where he was. <laughs> they have all these colored doors in that room where he was actually chasing Helen Trin, a, a bunch of rainbow colored door rooms where she keeps going through each and every one of them until she finally got out. But. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently uh, Crush just keeps rambling in like he's somewhat of a juggernaut. And all of a sudden, she actually pushed the, the walls and, and it started rumbling down like dominoes and everything. That was hilarious. There were other funny scenes in this movie too, especially the car chase scene between Crush and Bick and, and the Rat Man, known as Arthur. And there were other crazy scenes in this movie as well. I also love the scenes with uh, Bruce Campbell as uh, Renardo the Heel. I do agree, he, he deserved a better, bigger part than small, but he was hilarious. Um, especially when he did that smoking scene in the movie, which reveals a smoking. Now, apparently though, when this movie was made, and I've heard some stories about behind this production, Sam Raimi didn't want it to attend it to be a different type of film. He didn't want it to be exactly like as the studio uh, wanted it, which I know the studio, uh, Embassy Pictures, and and its co-distributor, Columbia Pictures, decided that they wanted to to want him to make it into a small comedy with with crazy stuff going around. But unfortunately, they had to do a lot of cuts in this film, a lot of editing, and all that stuff that just makes the film look. You know, as in comparison to what his idea was, very weak. But on the plus side, it still has all the wacky antics in this movie. It felt like if 
they felt more cartoonish in that sort of way. And I love how the characters kind of react to it. I mean, it's... Sure, I know the film could have done a whole lot better as it turned out. Unfortunately, it didn't go exactly as planned. And I could see why both Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell had disowned this film because of it. So since then, they want to pretend like this movie didn't even exist. Yeah. And since I've been a big fan of all of the Corn Brothers' uh, work, because I always loved their work, and I really enjoyed the Evil Dead films and all that, I thought this was pretty clever. A comedy film noir, if you ask me. But I think they could have done some work to it, so maybe that was the problem. But all the wise, I really enjoyed it. It was hilarious. I, I love all this wacky stuff, too. It felt like this was made at the time when they made uh, comedies that are so cartoonish in sort of way. Sort of like the Free Stooges, for instance. And it sort of felt like Looney Tunes in a way. It just... It was definitely what I thought, even though this was made in the 80s. And sadly, we don't get comedies like this nowadays, so that's for sure. Otherwise, it's a pretty underrated film. I don't think it's not as bad as you think. Prior to this film, at least both the Corn Brothers and Sam Raimi had worked together once again with another film called The Hudsucker Proxy. So I guess that made it up for that. And it's also the fact that it follows up to Evil Dead 2 which was almost as cartoonish and wacky as this film was but I guess it kinda got that attention at the time so it had a great cast you know I I, I really loved them I think this was a great film if, if you catch this film on TV I think you're gonna probably enjoy it but some people will feel a little disappointed that the film didn't turn out exactly as they expected it to be but that's okay but anyway I give Crime Wave Three stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.